everyone. This is Heidi from the Launchpad. I am pleased to be bringing you this Halloween wreath video. Um, spooky season is upon us and if you love to decorate for that season, then here is a new opportunity for you to create your very own wreath that will go along with all those great decorations I'm sure you're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it and talk about the supplies and the process of creating your wreath. Um, if you were not able to get a kit and you are looking to make this, you can find um, in the description box below, there will be a list of all the supplies you'll need and including some suggestions for places where you can get those supplies. Depending um, on when you see this, it could be next year. Uh, some of these may not be available, but I'm guessing that there will be very similar products available in colors that you might choose. So um, feel free to go along with us and learn how to make this Halloween wreath. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Indian Trails um, Public Library YouTube channel. Definitely like the video at the end if you thought it was helpful. And as always, make sure to reach out to us at digitalmaker at itpld.org to leave any comments, um, make some suggestions, ask any questions. Uh, and share pictures of your projects with us. We always enjoy seeing what you're making at home. Um, and we miss seeing you making those things on Launchpad. So share your pictures with us and I hope you enjoy the video. For this project, we'll be using a 14 inch wire wreath frame, as well as pipe cleaners. Um, we'll also need eight 10 inch wide um, burlap here, um, cut to 18 inch lengths. For our other contrasting material, I'll be using, um, or you should have five pieces of one color. And because, um, and these are six inch wide, cut to 18 inch lengths. Um, because I ran out of some of our other colors, I went ahead and used um, three of these purple and three of these orange for a total of six. So you should have five of one color and six of another. And then one bow is included and if I also included these little jingle bells. Um, feel free to find other accessories that you could use to spruce up your frame. So to get started, I'm going to move my materials out of the way. And we will begin by um, putting these pipe cleaners on our wreath frame to use to hold down our fabric. So to do that, I am going to just um, take one pipe cleaner and fold it in half, taking that loop on the very outside hoop along the spokes. I'm going to, where we will be putting this um, burlap, I'm going to loop or put that hoop up underneath the outside loop of my frame, um, slip the ends through, and then pull to tighten it up. So I'm going to give that a nice tug there to help tighten it. And then I'll move on to the next one. Once again, I'll just uh, go ahead and fold that in half. Now that I've got the hoop on one end, I'm going to put that underneath and up through right next to the spoke on my frame. I'll go ahead and take the loose ends and put them through that hoop 
on the other end of my pipe cleaner and pull to tighten. Now that you've seen me do two of these, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward so that you don't have to watch me do all of them, but feel free to stop and rewind and rewatch if you um, need some more help or a reminder of how to do this, if you're just not sure. So as we come to the end of this last one on our outside spokes, you can feel free to go back and give each one a tug um, or just make sure they're there tightly. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and add pipe cleaners to this third from the outside ring. And we're going to focus on putting those pipe cleaners in the middle of that ring. So think about where the center point is between two spokes and we're going to go up to that third from the outside again and we're going to put five pipe cleaners around or on each of those sections leaving one free so we're only going to do five of the pipe cleaners in the exact same way we did on the outside ring to the center of our third from the outside ring leaving one of those centers between the spokes um, empty. So there is a little bit of shifting here. You can see that's possible. Um, that's totally okay. It will actually help as you are um, putting your material, your tool on these um, so that you can kind of shift them and move them around to fill in space as you want. So we'll go ahead and finish getting these five um, pipe cleaners attached on the third from the outside ring. Um, finishing up with this fifth one and making sure after this fifth one is on and tightened that we have one empty space. And this will be where we put our bow later on. That nice tug. So you should have a total of 11 pipe cleaners on your hoop now. Six of them should be here on the outer hoop along these spokes. And then um, five of them should be on this third from the outside in a central position. And now we are ready to um, get started with our outer um, layer of mesh. So I'm going to, um, we'll move this to the side and uh, taking these um, 10 inch wide and 18 inch long strips, um, which the thing to remember with this is that this is a very forgiving process. So you might notice that uh, some of these edges um, are not perfect here. They might seem a little diagonal. Um, and as you work on your accordion fold, they might not come out perfectly or line up perfectly. But this is a project that is very forgiving and doesn't have to be for perfect. You're going to be able to kind of work on it and pull at it to get it into a place that you like. So we're going to start our accordion fold um, by folding down one edge and I'm going to place that flat and then fold it back over itself making it about the same width as that first fold then fold it forward, fold it back, fold it forward fold it back. Um, you might notice that it looks a little bit um, ragged on the sides. You may uh, kind of want to come up with your own technique of folding this. So you might turn it over like I just did. Um, work with it to see how it's going to best work with your technique to get this accordion fold, but we're just doing it back and forth until we reach the end. 
I'll go ahead and give it one, I believe, one last fold here. Well, we just have a little bit left, so we'll do it another. And your ultimate goal is to get kind of this bow-shaped looking piece that you've um, accordion folded. So if you have a shape that looks like this, you are well on your way to being successful. Now you'll pull your um, frame, your hoop, back towards you. And you want to take one of those um, pipe cleaners on the outside frame, part of your frame, and we're going to push one pipe cleaner, edge of the pipe cleaner up, and one down. And then we're going to press just about the center, or as close to the center. It is not exact, and it doesn't have to be exact. Um, into that and we're going to take those pipe cleaners and pull them over and across and give them a really good tug to secure it in place and or a tug to to hold it there and then um, wrap your pipe cleaners one two maybe three times to um, secure your burlap in place So we are going to use um, these pipe cleaners to attach our next section of tool, so to the next um, ring there. So take one end of your pipe cleaner, so I'm going to take this right end, and I'm going to slip it up under on the left side of the spoke, oh sorry, slip this left side up under the left side of the spoke, and then the right side of the pipe cleaner up under the right side of the spoke and then just give those a one twist and that should do it so that it's ready for my next um, row of tool once we get to that um, circled hoop and then you're just gonna kind of take it and pull at your ed edges there tug them into place you can um, tuck the one end near the hoop up underneath, so kind of under the hoop to hide it away behind there. Um, and then let's, let's get this one pushed in here. And then with the bottom part of the hoop, or the bottom part of the bow that we have here, we're gonna take one end and pull it up over the other end and to create kind of this half moon shape here you're going to have this little kind of half shape um, a lot of this is going to be hidden behind the frame I know right now it looks a little messy but as we fill this out you don't need to worry you are um, not going to see these edges nearly as much as you think you are because we are going to fill this frame up with a lot of fabric and build it so that it is nice and poofy and fluffy. So take your time zhuzhing those ends. And once you're done with um, that one, we're going to go to just rotate and go to the next spoke and grab another piece of burlap. And we're going to do the same thing. So once again, let me show you. Um, we're going to fold down one edge. Let me push this out of the way. And then we're going to do our back and forth accordion folds. Back. Fold it forward. Fold it back. Um, you don't have to worry about your edges lining up perfectly. You would like to get approximately the same width of those folds, but those also don't have to be perfect. Because when you're pulling and moving things into position, you will be able to have a great piece, looking piece. And once again, I'm going to pinch it in the middle. I have my bow shape right there. All ready to go.
and um, really don't worry too much about how this looks right now. We'll finesse it all as we keep going. Everything will be get fuller. I'm going to say this a lot. You're going to hear it a lot. Um, perfection with this. If you're trying to be perfect, you're going to get very frustrated. So just enjoy the um, process. And if it doesn't look like you want it to, you can easily let it go, just like I did. Stretch it back out flat. And then accordion fold your piece again. But really, I, I'm asking you, I'm telling you to lean into this does not have to be perfect. Um, we're going to make it look great however it comes out. But if you want to, you can always let go and start over again. So we're going to one last time accordion fold, fold it over, under, over, go back, I'm sorry, back, forward, back, you can see my edges are messy, that's okay, forward, back, there is some memory to this, so sometimes it's a little loosey-goosey. Just go with the flow. Turn this into a meditation, if you must, of just back and forward. And you will find the best way that works for you as you keep practicing. Remember that I have had the opportunity to practice this at this point about three times. This is my third wreath. So let me grab this in the middle. I have my little bow here. Just like that. And I'll bring my frame back towards me. I'm going to take my um, pipe cleaners and push one up and pull one down. Put the center of that little accordion folded bow that we just made in the middle again on the second one. Tighten um, or cross my pipe cleaners over that. You can use your thumb to push down if you need to um, to help press that flat. Tighten and then a one, two, and if you'd like a third time around just to make sure it's secure and then we're going to take our right um, pipe cleaner go under and to the right of the middle of that spoke and then we'll take our left pipe cleaner and go under and to the left of the spoke to come up um, on the uh, next frame loop and then we will just twist it once twice maybe to secure it in place and then again we are just going to um, pull at these ends tuck the one end up under the frame if you want to just to clean it up and hide it and keep it out of sight a little bit do the same on the other side Take those ends that are in the bottom and pulling one end over the other. You can tug them into place. The material does kind of stick to itself or stick to it. Yeah, stick to itself. So you can use that to your advantage to make those um, ends kind of overlap and then stay in place. And now we have two. So we're going to do this same process around the whole outside um, with the folding, the um, tying of the ends on the remaining four pipe cleaners on the outside near those spokes. And I'm going to go ahead now and um, fast forward. And you'll keep working at this, um, doing the same technique 
with each of these outer spokes um, accordion fold then um, secure it by twisting your tie around the bow that you create flipping those inner um, edges underneath your frame and overlapping those outer edges as well as making sure you slip the excess um, pipe cleaner underneath one on each side of the spoke and that will help us get ready for the next step. If you at any point feel like you need to go back, please do so. Um, that's the beauty of a video like this is you can pause, go back, watch again, pause, go back, watch again until you feel comfortable. And as I said before, you can just let these go if you need to and start over again. So as we're coming up on our last accordion fold here, um, take some time if you want to pull and overlap some things, um, zhuzh them into place as you might say, and then we will start getting ready to do our second row um, using the ends of our um, pipe cleaners from the first row. And for that, we will want to use the um, for Q6, the color that came with six pieces. So um, once I get all of this into a place where I'm happy with, remember the second row that you do is going to fill in some of those gaps. So if it's still not perfect, that's okay. Um, go ahead and grab your six pieces. Remember for me, I am using two colors and I'm going to alternate my colors. And we are literally going to do um, just the same thing that we did for those outer pieces when it comes to our accordion fold. So you, once again, will be using six of the same colors, or if you would like to um, alternate like I'm doing here, you can split up your colors that you were given, your two colors, um, to alternate around this um, second row and then around the third row. So um, to do that, you'll need to alternate. You'll need six and then you'll need five left. So um, using these um, pipe cleaners that I had pulled up from the bottom, um, we are going to use these ones to secure and I'm going to go ahead and do my top and bottom. Make sure that the pipe cleaners fold the top and the bottom. And then here's our old friend, the accordion fold. You may find that it is easier to accordion fold this um, tool fabric. It doesn't have the same kind of memory, so it does make it a little bit simpler. So just uh, going to fold that forward and back and forward and back until um, we have this nice little rectangle. And I'm going to find that center point again. And as you can see, it makes a nice um, little bow there with some fluffy little edges. And... I'm going to go ahead and take that and pulling my frame back in front of me. Um, this time, instead of going up and down, I'm going to go left to right. It's a small change. It's not going to make a huge difference, but I'm going to do a left to right orientation on my pipe cleaners this time. Get that in the middle. I'm pushing down with my, you know, thumbs or fingers. Um, cross those pipe cleaners over the top, pulling as tight as possible. And then go ahead and wrap those around each other once, twice. Um, you can always do a third time if you'd like to. After I do this, I'm going to turn it over. 
and then go ahead and secure this and wrap it on the back once twice and we'll do a third time just to make sure it's nice and stable there many times as you feel is necessary to get the stability you want. Um, you can snip these edges if you want um, with some scissors. I'm just going to leave mine because um, as this fills up with the tool uh, and other decorations, it's really your, um, all of the fluffy stuff is going to kind of cover them up so they won't easily be seen but you can kind of tuck them in and hide them in the frame if you would like. And then once again, we're gonna just give these ends tugs, pull them out, pull them together. Um, you can overlap them with each other until you get the fullness that you want. And then, let's see. All right, so then I'm going to move to the next one. Um, and I'm going to, since I am alternating colors, I'm going to go ahead and go with the orange and do the same thing that I did with the purple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get that ready, push it aside, and just like with the purple, I'm going to go ahead and I will accordion fold um, these strips, the strip, sorry, as well. So I'm going to go back, forward, pardon my camera. Back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, and repeat that until I am all done with it and ready to attach it. So once again, um, this time having my pipe cleaners go to the left and to the right of my tool, crossing them over as tightly as I possibly can, giving them a nice, that tool, a nice squeeze right there in the middle. And then wrapping it around itself, pardon my camera. Wrap once. I think I did three times and then tucking that up under pulling it through flipping it over to um, tighten and wrap around the um, spoke on the back turning it back over to the front so that you can um, pull it and fluff out that tool just like we did with the purple one or whichever colors you may be using on this um, ring of your um, frame. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward again, keep alternating or I will keep alternating colors. You go ahead and if that's what you've chosen to do but definitely keep doing your accordion folding um, placing your um, attaching it with your pipe cleaners um, making sure they get attached and secured behind and then flipping it back over to fluff them out and you will do that until you have six pieces of tool um, around that second from the outside uh, hoop 
of your frame. So as we come up on our last one, we um, can flip it back over once you've secured it. Uh, we'll give this a little bit of a tug and fluff it out. Um, you can see that we're starting to get some more fullness and um, nice coverage. And with um, our next color, you're going to see even more coverage. We'll be working with um, our five um, pipe cleaners on that second from the inside frame or third from the outside frame, however you want to think about it. Remember we have the five. We are leaving that one empty um, space in the middle. So these pipe cleaners should be perf not perfectly, nothing will ever be perfect, but those pipe cleaners should be approximately in between um, the pieces of tool that you just completed. And we're going to take our green or whatever um, color you have five pieces of tool of. And I'm going to go ahead and start fast ordering here because at this point you should have a pretty good idea what to do. Um, oh, before I do that though, um, on this one, so we've done uh, on the bottom, we did our um, pipe cleaners top and bottom. On the second row, we did them left and right. So you can make a choice to do left to right, top to bottom. I'm going to go ahead um, and I believe I'm going to do um, top to bottom on these ones. Just like I did with my first row. Now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this to your accordion fold and attach these five pieces to your um, that hoop of the ring, your five remaining um, pipe cleaners. So you will go ahead and um, just do like we've been doing with everything else to attach your tool here. Uh, make sure to give it a pull it as tight as possible across the approximate center. Um, give it a few twists, give your pipe cleaner a few twists, pull it to the back, your pipe cleaners to the back, give those a twist there, and then you should be able to either skip them if you want, or um, just line them up with the frame itself to kind of hide them. You can see that this is starting to bulk up and bulk out and um, hide a lot of that frame as you keep working. And as we um, near the end of attaching our last piece of tool, um, now comes the part where we get to, we have a base of a, um, a, a wreath that we can now add a little bit more decoration to. So we did intentionally leave um, that one area without any tool, um, feel free to go around, you know, and tug and pull and get things fluffed out to a point where you feel like things are, uh, have enough coverage um, that you feel pretty pleased and happy with. Do not try to be a perfectionist about this. Um, just be happy. And now we're ready to um, add the one of two final pieces. There are a variety of ways of you can finish this off. Um, this little space that we left here, um, this is where we're going to attach our little um, glittery skull bow. I apologize for the mess of glitter. Uh, when I ordered these online, I was not able to see them up close, so I did not know how much um, glittery fallout you would be getting. But you can go ahead and press that there. Um, it comes, or if you want to avoid the glitter skull, you could consider doing some of these jack o' lantern jingle bells. Um, you could take the jingle bells and 
place them in a little group there in the center if you'd like. There's a, a lot of possibilities for ways to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and go as intended with the, the bow. Um, you should have a little metal wire that goes through your bow. So get those pieces um, as straight as possible and then you can use them to attach to that um, very inner ring of your frame just by um, kind of sliding them along there. Might take a little bit of dexterity to do that. And then um, kind of twisting those pieces together. If you need to, you can turn your frame over um, however you need to do this and um, twist those pieces of wire together to attach your bow to your wreath. Because who says spooky season can't have bows just like Christmas does. Alright, let me have that this attached now. You got a nice little spooky um, skull bow there. So at this point, you could stop if you're happy with your wreath. Um, you could um, add your little jingle bells to other places along your wreath if you would like. Using the excess pipe cleaners that you have hiding in the back to attach um, those jingle, jingle jack-o'-lanterns. Um, if you don't want to use the jack-o'-lanterns, of course, that's perfectly okay as well. I encourage you to think about some other ideas if you'd like to add a little bit of extra, um, oomph in some way to your wreath. If you are happy with how it is right now, that is totally fine to stop here. Uh, a few ideas that I could suggest are to, um, buy some spider webs and that's big fake spider web and spread it out. Um, you could grab some fake little spiders to spread around. Um, if you really want to get fancy, you could, of course, um, buy some of those cute little fairy lights to put in there, the LED one. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed this program and your finished product. Um, feel free if you add more detail or even if you don't to share a picture of your product with us or any questions, comments, um, suggestions by emailing pictures and those to digitalmaker at itpld.org. Um, I hope you had a great time. I know I had a lot of fun making this and I hope that you will consider this a prize decoration for your home or even something that you can gift to somebody else. Um, thank you for joining me, and have a happy Halloween if you celebrate, or whatever you do for the spooky season. Um, happy making, and we will see you in the launch pad and in some of our virtual spaces. Goodbye!